The recent Olympic Winter Games enthralled the world as athletes representing 89 countries competed in 98 different events. Remarkably, 10 of these athletes were members of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, three of whom earned medals. Recently highlighted in the church news, Christopher Fote, Noel Picas Pace, and Tora Bright. We offer our congratulations to all of the athletes who competed. Well done. I speak of these games this morning, directing my thoughts to young men, young women, and young single adults, you who are in your critical years which set the course for your life. I feel a great sense of urgency in addressing you. For you to feel that urgency, I first share the story of Noel Picas Pace, one of those Latter-day Saint athletes. In Noel's event, The Skeleton, athletes build momentum as they sprint and then plunge headfirst on a small sled with their faces inches above the ground. They race down a winding, icy track at speeds that top 90 miles an hour. Remarkably, years of preparation would be considered either a success or a disappointment based on what happened in the space of four intense 60-second runs. Noelle's previous 2006 Olympic dreams were dashed when a terrible accident left her with a broken leg. In the 2010 Olympics, her dreams fell short again when just one-tenth of a second kept her from a medal stand. Can you imagine the anxiety she felt as she waited to begin her first run in the 2014 Olympics? Years of preparation would culminate in only a sliver of time, four minutes total. She spent years preparing for those four minutes and would spend a lifetime afterward reflecting on them. Noelle's final runs were virtually flawless. We will never forget her leap into the stands to embrace her family after crossing the finish line, exclaiming, we did it. Years of preparation had paid off. We saw her young women medallion around her neck as the silver medal was placed there beside it. It may seem unfair that Noelle's entire Olympic dreams hinged on what she did during just four brief minutes, but she knew it, and that is why she prepared so diligently. She sensed the magnitude, the urgency of her four minutes, and what they would mean for the rest of her life. We also remember Christopher, Christopher Fote, a member of the team that won the bronze medal in the four-man bobsled race. While he could have given up after a devastating crash in the 2010 Olympics, he chose to persevere. After a fantastic redemptive run, he won the prize he so diligently sought. Now, consider how your pathway to eternal life is similar to these athletes' four-minute performance. You are an eternal being. Before you were born, you existed as a spirit. In the presence of a loving Heavenly Father, you trained and prepared to come to the earth for a brief moment and, well, perform. This life is your four minutes. While you are here, your actions will determine whether you win the prize of eternal life. The prophet Amulek described, this life is the time to prepare to meet God. Yea, behold, the day of this life is the day to perform your labors. In a sense, your four minutes have already begun. The clock is ticking. The words of the Apostle Paul seem so fitting to run the race that you may obtain the prize. In the same way that certain steps are essential in the very brief performance of an Olympic athlete, jumps or maneuvers for ice skaters and snowboarders, negotiating the turns of a bobsled run or carving through the gates of a downhill slalom course, so it is in our lives where certain things are absolutely essential. Checkpoints which move us through our spiritual performance on earth. These spiritual markers are the essential God-given ordinances of the gospel. Baptism, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, priesthood ordinations, temple ordinances, and partaking of the sacrament each week. In these ordinances, the power of godliness is manifest. And in the same way that the discipline of training prepares an athlete to perform elements in their sport at the highest level, 
Keeping the commandments will qualify you to perform these saving ordinances. Do you sense the urgency? My young friends, wherever you are in your four-minute performance, I urge you to ponder, what do I need to do next to ensure my mettle? Perhaps during this conference, the Spirit has whispered to you what that may be to prepare more thoughtfully for an ordinance in your future or to receive an ordinance that you should have received a long time ago. Whatever it may be, do it now. Don't wait. Your four minutes will pass quickly and you'll have eternity to think about what you did in this life. Self-discipline is needed. Daily prayer, scripture study, and church attendance must be the foundation of your training. A consistent pattern of obeying the commandments, keeping the covenants you have made, and following the standard, the Lord's standard found in for the strength of youth is required. Perhaps you're aware of things in your life that are threatening to slow or stop your spiritual progress. If so, follow Paul's counsel. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. It is not yet too late to repent, but it soon may be because no one really knows when your four minutes will be over. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, I already blew it. My four minutes are already a disaster. I may as well give up. If so, stop thinking that and never think it again. The miracle of the atonement can make up for imperfections in our performance. As Elder Tolland has taught, quote, to those of you who may still be hanging back, I testify of the renewing power of God's love and the miracle of His grace. It is never too late, so long as the Master says there is time. Don't delay." Close quote. Remember, you're not alone. The Savior has promised that He will not leave you comfortless. You also have a family, friends, and leaders who are cheering you on. Although my remarks have been directed to the youth of the Church, for parents and grandparents I offer the following. Recently, Elder Bednar described a simple way to conduct a family assessment to mark progress on the covenant path for essential ordinances. All that is needed is a piece of paper with two columns, name and plan for next or needful ordinance. I did this recently, listing each family member. Among them, I noted an infant grandson soon to be blessed a six-year-old grandson whose preparation for baptism was essential, and a son turning 18 whose preparation for priesthood and temple endowment was imminent. Everyone on the list needed the sacrament ordinance. This simple exercise assisted Lisa and me in fulfilling our role to help each member of our family along the covenant path with an action plan for each of them. Perhaps this is an idea for you which will lead to family discussions, family home evening lessons, preparation, and even invitations for essential ordinances in your family. As a skier and snowboarder myself, I was deeply impressed with the four-minute silver medal winning performance of Australian LDS athlete, snowboarder Tara Bright, Tora Bright in the halfpipe competition. She dazzled the world as she finished a virtually flawless run, culminating in a backside rodeo 720. However, however, even more impressive and surprising to the world was the way she reached out and demonstrated Christ-like love to her competitors. She noticed an American snowboarder, Kelly Clark, who had had a bad first run in her final round and appeared to be nervous about her second run. She gave me a hug, Clark recalls. She just held me until I actually calmed down enough and I slowed my breathing. It was good to have a hug from a friend. Kelly Clark would later join Tora on the winner's podium as a bronze medalist. When asked about this unusual act of kindness toward her, toward her opponent, which could have put her own silver medal at risk, Tora simply said, 
I am a competitor, I want to do my best, but I want my fellow competitors to do their best too. With that in mind, is there someone who needs your encouragement, a family member, a friend, a classmate, or fellow quorum member? How can you help them with their four minutes? Dear friends, you are in the midst of an exhilarating journey. In some ways, you are racing down the half pipe or sled track, and it can be challenging to perform each element or navigate each turn along the way. But remember, you've prepared for this for millennia. This is your moment to perform. This is your four minutes. The time is now. I express my utmost confidence in, you, in your abilities. You have the Savior of the world on your side. If you seek His help and follow His directions, how can you fail? I conclude with my testimony of the blessing we have in a living prophet, President Thomas S. Monson, and of Jesus Christ and of His role as our Savior and Redeemer. In His holy name, Jesus Christ, amen.